Hi, I'm back at Lakeside School and I'm in the chemistry lab as you can see. We're going to be talking about this that doesn't just have two elements, hydrogen and helium, but has a hundred. Now, look around you and try and count how many different sorts of materials you can see. Ten easily, a hundred not too hard. And if you counted really carefully, well, look at all these materials here, you could probably come up quite easily to a thousand, ten thousand, or maybe even a hundred thousand. That's because in a universe with a hundred elements, you haven't just got a hundred different materials. Those elements can combine with each other in a huge number of different ways to form millions and millions of new materials, all the materials we see in the world around us. All these new materials eventually combine to, find, to, com to, to create entirely new astronomical bodies. The most important by far for us, of course, is our home planet, the Earth. But before we describe how the Earth and the other planets of the solar system was created, there's a little problem we have to take up. You'll remember from the last unit, we saw that all those new elements that were created made up only 2% of all the atoms in the universe. Yet if we look at our Earth, we'll find that 90% of the Earth is made up of elements like iron, oxygen, silicon, magnesium, and other elements created in supernovae and dying stars. So how did they get concentrated like this to form planets and bodies like that? Now before I give my answer, I'd like to ask if you have any ideas about how that might have happened. To answer these questions, we must think about chemistry. Now, chemistry is all about how different elements link up, how their atoms link up to form what we call molecules. How atoms link up depends very much on the arrangement of their electrons. Some elements, such as helium, are very, very stable. They hardly ever link up with other atoms. In fact, they're known as the noble gases. It's as if they're too snooty to join up with other atoms. You'll find them on the right side of the periodic table, by the way. But most atoms really like to link up with other atoms. We say they are reactive. Hydrogen and oxygen, for example, are always looking for chances to link up with other atoms. If you see burning or you see a flame, what you're really seeing is oxygen linking up really violently with other atoms. It's very reactive indeed. Now, when atoms join together, we call them molecules. Each molecule has its own distinctive qualities, which may be very different from the elements of which they're formed. For example, hydrogen and oxygen are both gases, but when they combine, they form a very, very familiar liquid, water, H2O. And water has qualities completely different from both hydrogen and oxygen. Different types of molecules also have different types of bonds. Some bonds are extremely rigid, Flex but, but others are very flexible. Some are very strong, very hard to break. Others are very easy to break. So there's a huge variety of different types of links between, between molecules. Carbon, for example, can link up with itself to form diamonds. Now, in a diamond, the bonds are extremely strong and extremely rigid. So a diamond is very tough indeed. But carbon atoms could also link up with themselves to form a very different material, graphite. Now, graphite is the lead in a pencil. It's very soft stuff indeed. So different bonds make a lot of, lot of difference. Now, these different types of links, different types of bonds, mean we have a huge variety of different types of materials. That's what explains the huge variety of these materials. But note that it's mostly elements other than hydrogen or helium that make up these chemicals. And that's one reason why when we talk about rich chemistry, we're talking mostly about that tiny 2% of elements from the periodic table. 